nerderotic.com. Welcome back, everyone. We are here to discuss Doctor Who, Season 12, Episode 8, uh, The Haunting of Villa Di, uh, Diodato, Didato, I don't even Dia, know. Dia whatever. Dia whatever. It, it, it really didn't matter. The name of the manor didn't really come up that much that I remember. And not much happened. Uh, I think this remains the best example because uh, I'm hearing people like this. I knew people would like this episode. I even mentioned it to you guys in the chat. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we've just come to a place where people want something to exist so badly they're willing to swallow anything. Mm -hmm. Especially god-awful episodes like this. Uh, and this show is not an improvement, will not be an improvement, and apparently... Chris Chibnall is indeed the Rian Johnson and Jar Jar Abrams and Alex Kurtzman of the UK. And we will go into that thanks to the third female doctor, played by Starry Eyed Girl, okay. had a good catch. But first, I would like to introduce my co host. We will start out, ladies first, with the third female doctor, played <laughs> by Starry Eyed Girl. Hi. Hello. Thank you, you for having me. Of course. Of course, thank you. It, it was my birthday yesterday, so I've, I've had a really good time. It, Kind of glad that Doctor Who wasn't on a Saturday for a change. Yeah. Just so I'd, I was spared this. <laughs> well, happy 21st birthday. You're now old enough to drink oh, in the United you. States. And uh, welcome <laughs> to adulthood. Uh, it, it's all downhill from here. Uh, and uh, for our Canadian representation, we have the wonderful, the talented, the lovely Bowls Trek. Good afternoon, A. Eh? I had to throw that in there. And uh, happy belated birthday to... Uh, to Starry at yeah, 21. I remember being 21 Thank back in the <laughs> century, and it was a much better century, I must say. Uh, so yeah, how are we all doing today? Did uh, did we have fun with uh, the uh, the haunting of Villa? De, uh, I don't give a shit. Sorry, Gary. Yeah. The Adato. No, it's fine. Uh, it's totally fine. Uh, it was boring. Uh, you mentioned that both of us wanted to pause it within the first 10 minutes. Uh, it was typical people sitting around talking at tables uh, we had Lord mm -hmm. Byron we had Mary Shelley first let's let's not bury the lead starry the third female doctor played by starry eyed girl what did yeah. you discover that I had uh, completely well, forgotten about by the way <laughs> yeah so did I well back in uh, was it 2011 there was a big finish story a Paul McGann story featuring Mary Shelley as the companion and a cyberman and it's and while it's not the same story, they are there are similarities. And even on the front cover, the Cyberman looks very, very similar. And it's just more proof that you know we just can't have any originality in modern Doctor Who. We just can't. And, <sighs> no. and then there's the 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 other point where um, you were just talking. Oh, and uh, oh, we have a special guest. We do. Uh, he's an up-and-coming YouTuber. You might not have heard of him. Uh, he's very talented. We, we need to get him to his first thousand subs today, folks. So yeah, uh, we get him on a thousand subs. I'm trying really hard. So yeah, I'm not really that special, I guess. But it's nice to be here anyway. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thank you for joining yes. us. The critical Good to see drinker. you, Jinka. That is brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so continue, please. Starry. Oh, yes. So, um, so if we think back to there's always been the question as to whether or not Big Finish is canon, and with every other doctor except for Paul McGann, that question is still open. But if everybody mm -hmm. remembers back to a, um, a little episode or vignette called Night of the Doctor, uh, mm -hmm. where the eighth doctor actually mentions his companions, that essentially has mm -hmm. canonized the eighth doctor big finish releases. Mm -hmm. So, um, so there might be some, uh, shall we say inconsistency here? Uh, what do we think? Uh, yeah. What's uh, inconsistency with modern doctor who, who would have thought it? <laughs> what? Yeah. Um, yeah, either the doctor didn't remember Mary Shelley didn't bring it up, uh, but she did remember how gorgeous Lord Byron's daughter's uh, brain was. Uh, and yeah, mm -hmm. quickly, 
I'm just going to go over the plot of this episode. Uh, it was the family randomly showed up in the 1800s. I can't even remember why they were at the house, and I don't really care. And they ran I don't around. Think we even got an explanation for no. it. it. Just they just uh, showed no, they, up. It was they weird. showed up at the door, and yeah, that's yeah. it. Oh, they wanted. No, they, no, this this came after. This came directly after. Can you hear me? Because the doctor said she cheered Graham up by saying she was going to take him to see Frankenstein. Yeah, so they were going to watch them write, and Lord Byron yeah. was there, and they were playing freaking Twister or whatever, and they were disappointed. <laughs> and and then uh, after mentioning that we can't mention Frankenstein, then the doctor brings up we want to have a ghost story, and then all of a sudden there's a ghost in the house, and there's a baby, and there's uh, the house is folding in on itself, and there's a bunch of running around and jump scares, and Graham can't pee, and uh, Lord Byron <laughs> is an idiot and a coward because he's a white male. We'll get into that later. Uh, then we find out that all of this is happening because something's trying to press its way through time. And it's the lone Cyberman, the cyber, the lone Cyberman that has some emotions, because I always like Cyberman with emotions, because that, I mean, that's the unique thing about him. Right. Oh, actually, it isn't. Um, and they're looking for something. And we find out that Mary Shelley's uh, what Mr. Shelley, her boyfriend or uh, future husband, whatever has had found the Siberium, uh, which is a gelatinous silver snot that was in a lake, which makes you think of the lady in the lake. He reaches, grabs it. He becomes a Siberian, but he tries to protect it from the, from the lone Cybermen. And uh, they bring up Jack's warning. This is after running around. Uh, there was some jumps. Oh, by the way, there's a, a, a mother and a daughter made ghost uh, that ends up being nothing uh, at the end. And eventually the Cyberman and the doctor monologue back and forth. Apparently the Cyberman's left arm doesn't work because he just keeps trying to hit the doctor with his right arm and she ducks, uh, which is what she runs like as well. And then eventually <laughs> he, she makes the decision to give the Siberium to the Cyberman, even though that Shelly was trying to protect it because it was going to kill him. And Ryan points out the obvious, hey, it's just one bloke. Mm -hmm against billions and then she said this one person and words matter and da 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 uh can change everything and you won't exist and then she whines a little bit and then we finally got a proper jody whitaker 13th doctor speech which was whining and judge it was a little judgmental it was perfect for her actually a little sneery mm -hmm. and then the lone cyberman gets what he wants he takes off and now the doctor has to go fix the mess in the future the end uh mm -hmm. and uh, it was just a bunch of running around and sitting and like I said before, it is CW Doctor Who. I blame the CW for all this, by the way, because it's really brought critical thinking down to the lowest co uh, common denominator. And now people just want to accept this thing because they want this thing to exist and they want it to exist so badly they'll accept anything. Sorry, guys, but you guys can now have your thoughts on the show. Well, Dude, I don't think you covered it pretty well there, to be honest. Yeah, oh, you, you missed the part where the ghost lady brought Graham a sandwich. Yeah. Oh, yes. Cause, oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, the, the olden days. That, that couldn't have been deliberate. No way that was deliberate. <laughs> no, th there was a lot of deliberate. The, the most deliberate thing in here was taking Lord mm. Byron, and you could have made him a coward and kind of a pompous ass but they like really made a point to make him a coward he hid behind a woman and uh and 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 the doctor chastised him a little bit and says well i'm not too big on you but i'm i'm in love with your daughter's gorgeous brain so and oh of course lord byron was hitting on the doctor and we had mm -hmm. mrs doctor that was that was throughout mm -hmm. the entire episode because they just want to remind us that the doctor is female even though they don't write her as female at all mm -hmm. oh, oh and imply they do they not imply that he steals a lot of her ideas as well for his own poetry? Yeah, like he doesn't actually have yes. any individual creativity. It's like one of the greatest literary minds of mm -hmm. humanity, and it's like, no, nah, no, nah, I just got it off someone else. Like, yep. couldn't allow him to yeah. have anything by himself. No, and 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 no. Uh, the other thing was the dance scene in the beginning. That was, uh, I think, all of our favorite scenes, right? The oh, the, it was like the... freaking party time in that house, man. I didn't want it to end. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah and like you were saying gary she uh she dances like she runs it was uh i i think and there's a lot of contenders for this but i think that may have been the most cringeworthy scene this entire season and of course as we were mm -hmm. saying it had to end with graham having to pee 
Us, he's old. Yes. You know, he's obviously old and white and dumb. I like so uh, even when she's dancing, she still makes Arnold Rimmer faces. Like <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's like just once in your life can you act with a little bit of dignity? Nah. <laughs> No, I, this is going to be, I, it's always fun to pick out the Jody facial expression for the thumbnail. I kind of reuse one, but it's because I haven't seen the episode mm-hmm. yet. So I'm going to, there's, a, um, I think her sneering while she's giving that, I have to make the choice. You know, this isn't a level playing field. I'm on the mountain making my only choice. It's like, God, it was the first time, like, I really mm-hmm. wanted the doctor to shut up. Uh, and yeah. it, it was horrible. And she just can't, they tried, they gave it a, a I'll give it. They gave it an effort to try to make Jody intimidating and godlike, and it just failed miserably. But what a way to phrase it as well. It's like, you know, you guys are down there at the bottom of the mountain, and I'm up in the stratosphere because I am so far above everything. You know, I'm so superior to you. You know, she could have phrased that a different way to make her a bit more sympathetic and yeah. say, you know, well, one of yeah. us has to make this difficult choice and it falls mm-hmm. to me because I'm the leader and it's what I always have to do and it sucks, mm-hmm. but that's my job. But no, it's We've just like, no, I'm just better than you. You know, we had this with Capaldi when he said, you know, sometimes all you have are bad choices, but you still have to choose. We've had it with the Eccleston doctor, with the it's the different morality. This is what they were trying to aim for, but because this, the writer, you know, is a soap writer, she just could not do it. Well, also, Eccleson and uh, Tennant and Capaldi looked like they were on the brink of tears and were on the brink of tears mm. yep. uh, yeah. when they gave those speeches. And you could see the, the water welling up in their eyes because they are true actors. And uh, mm-hmm. Jody just looked uh, annoyed and judgmental, and it's it comes. But you're right. Mm-hmm. The writing, you know, we have uh, Maxine Alderton was the writer of this episode, and she is known for a show I have never seen called Emmerdale. So, uh, oh I don't... shit, man! <laughs> yeah, one hundred and sixty. Me and girl know that you're one. Wouldn't... Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Like, put it this way, it's not exactly top flight drama. If you're an American and you watched it, you'd be blown away, man. <laughs> All right. She's also written The Worst Witch. So, uh, and I have not heard of that either. So, uh, but I imagine it's probably no better than CW, uh, which I've watched a lot of, unfortunately, because, uh, I mean, aside from the superhero stuff, Vampire Diaries, I watched, uh, God, the first five seasons all the way through because of uh, Mrs. Nerdrotic, and uh, I still have brain cells. I actually think that did more damage to my brain than all the acid I took in the 80s, but... Uh, <laughs> um yeah so it was uh yeah it, it was just a lead up it was supposed to be kind of chibnall's turn left you know uh we're leading up to the big mm-hmm. end right so that's going to be mm-hmm. all of next season and then we have this lone cyberman and now he can rebuild the cyber army and they're going to go in the future and uh the master is probably going to be there connected to it and i just uh, for the cybermen coming back especially mm-hmm. we just did this not too long ago with capaldi's first season and that lead up although mm-hmm. the follow-up wasn't great the lead up was great with missy yeah. and everything that was awesome mm-hmm. uh this not so much i just you know it it, it the show it, it is old now that it just feels like an old show that's in season mm-hmm. 13 or 12 or uh yeah season 12 i lose count uh What's the technical mm-hmm. season count on this Bulls trick? Is it like 20? Uh, uh, this would be. If you counted the classic series. 38. 30. 30. Jesus 30. Christ. Yeah, it feels like yeah. season 38 or 42 or 56. That's what it feels like right mm-hmm. now. Um, I, mean, I mean, How many times can you keep bringing back these old enemies before it just becomes ridiculous and tiresome? Mm-hmm. And... and at this point, they need to bring them back and, you know, maybe provide some answers or do something radically new with them. Mm-hmm. Um, but you bring back the Cyberman and he's like a hodgepodge, really. Uh, and, mm-hmm. you know, it, the, even when Jack came back, the way J- Captain Jack delivered it, it, it for a second, mm-hmm. it felt like Doctor Who. It's like, oh, my God, him delivering a line, yeah. talking about the Cyberman. I, I mean, I know this is an mm-hmm. oasis that I'm going to go back to Jody, but it felt like Dr. Ufferman, and it just makes it mm-hmm. that much worse, to be honest with you. Um, but I know the people at Gallifrey, uh, Gall- uh, Gallifrey One is going on this weekend. I was supposed to go. Mm-hmm. I didn't uh, because I had to do my taxes. So 
life goes on. Uh, I'm sure they're celebrating it down there. Uh, the the five or ten people who are left for the show, the ratings are sinking like a freaking stone. Um, a- anything that hits zero for an entire day on Rotten Tomatoes is pathetically bad. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what to say anymore. It's like, we got that article, by the way, Starry. Did you read that? Did anybody read that? I did. I did from read the BBC, it, yes. Uh, the fan uh, I've actually, I have it up in a tab. Uh, I have not read it yet, but uh, it's going to be my hilarity for later on today. It will be. There is, uh, I mean, I, listen, I'm not going to go over it here, but it, 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 it's, it was a, it's a big recap of fandom over the years they go back to freaking sherlock holmes they talk about the origin Mm -hmm. of fan fiction and the freaking homoerotic fan fiction fiction from star trek which is this has been brought up so much in the last few Mm -hmm. articles uh but then they finally get the doctor who like at the very and they talk about the you know the alt-right doctor who fans because there's so many alt-right doctor who fans. some were all racist some were all yep misogynist uh yeah so and entitled. They, they call us um, entitled, entitled, uh, and they confuse investment with entitlement. Um, mm-hmm. When you take on a known property and you want that built in fan base, you do owe them something. You do. Mm-hmm. You don't, not everything, but you owe them something. And mm-hmm. what they failed to mention at every one of these articles and every one of these criticisms, because uh, they love to bring up inclusivity and diversity which nobody has a problem with but they never bring up well but they did take a male character and change it into a female i mean that you might want to understand why some fans might be pissed off about that if they took Mm -hmm. spider-man and made her in spider woman some people would get pissed about that if you go and muck Mm -hmm. around in the past people will get pissed about that when you have to take lord byron and uh, it's jarring they you take you out of a scene to make sure he looks like an idiot and just him not anybody else that mm-hmm. is what we're talking about. It's nothing else. Yeah. It's nothing else. Well, I think at this point, it's kind of expected almost. You yep. watch Doctor Who and you're like, you're just waiting for that moment when they do something yep. and you know it's coming, you know? Uh, mm-hmm. And it came pretty quickly tonight as it happens. <laughs> it did, it did. I love, the, I love the time of this article as well. It, You know, within a week of the BBC getting all these complaints, and they are still getting complaints, uh, from last week, they're also getting complaints about the statement that they released, which apparently was not meant to be released publicly. Um, it wasn't. It was, yeah, no. it wasn't. No, it was. Um, that was for was individual intended. email responses, wasn't it? It was yeah. indeed. So the the Radio Times are in hot water at the moment, which I find hilarious. <laughs> it, it was a form letter, it was it. a copy and paste job. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, well, and uh, oh, and in terms of the ratings, uh, f- uh, the final consolidated for Praxius came in. Uh, so that one mm-hmm. is, we're now down to five point two two ratings. Wow. Uh, wow! And that's and can you hear me was lower. So can you hear me? Might I'd say might uh, be the first episode for final consolidated to drop below 5 million, which I believe would make it the third lowest rated episode of all time. Oh my God. That's terrible. Um, (laughs) That, uh, yeah, look at that. Holy shit. So um, they, uh, I don't know what they're going to do. It it, next year is not going to be better. Uh, They can put it. It's Sunday's not even helping it now. At this point, uh, no. I, I'm guessing that the next season will come out around Christmas because uh, more people watch TV right around that time, around fall. Uh, the, uh, here in the States, that's like peak advertising here on YouTube and here mm-hmm. on regular broadcast television. And uh, yeah, just more people are sitting around. So I wouldn't be surprised if they changed it to that. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. shortened episodes. I mean, I'm not expecting the ratings to be any good. I mean, there was zero publicity for this episode yeah uh yeah it was just weird they keep talking um, about which the last i don't year. understand because this was a, this was an improvement on last week i mean that's not saying much but you know um yeah it's they've gone straight for the finale so you know they've obviously got no faith in it well <clears throat> no and the the rumors have been going around that people are not well the bbc 
Uh, the few that are level-headed are not happy, uh, to put it mildly, with where this is going. Uh, and, and I think that the current rumor now is Series 13 will air in the fall of 2021. Um, mm -hmm. I think that just came out this week. Yeah. So, yeah, so at least it'll be next year. And uh, that probably explains why they did the Christmas special early and they're going to come in. Mm -hmm. So my guess, I, this could be just pull, I'm just pulling this out of my ass that we get an announcement of a new doctor next year. Then, I mean, we'd have to, because if it's going to be Jody's last, uh, mm -hmm. you know, be yeah. August, August, maybe summer of next year, mm -hmm. or, or they cancel it. <laughs> could it be one yeah. of the two? I wouldn't be surprised either way, but I'll tell you one thing. The next doctor will not be a white male. Oh god! No. I, I think I think no. it'll probably be a male. I think it'll probably be a guy, but I I bet he's uh, a minority of some sort. So well, does anybody? Get yeah. Did anybody notice that uh, Save the BBC was trending this morning on yeah, Twitter? Yeah, something yes, to say about yes. that on Twitter earlier. <laughs> yeah, <that> is, <laughs> yes, it is not looking good. I guess not. I, I, I honestly think the writing's on the wall for the BBC license fee. I, I think Boris Johnson's made a lot of noises about wanting to reevaluate it. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's a, a growing appetite for people who just are done with it. Because ultimately, like, for people who are kind of hard up, like, that money could be much better used. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's not a huge amount each year, but it does add up. And, you know, yeah. you've got the fact that you've got to pay this just to watch a TV program that you don't even watch most of the time kind of sucks mm. like it's really outdated it does yeah i uh I, I think the best model and it would be uh quite humorous to see how this ends up but if it became a subscription-based service um something tells me that a few people may be getting terminated from the bbc yeah uh, they'll, they'll just they'll, they'll stick adverts in like every other terrestrial channel here in the uk it'll just become yeah. like itv or whatever uh, I, I can't see the BBC ever go in full subscription service. It would just be it would be too big of a switch up for them. But yeah, either way, if they do have to like become competitive, so many heads are going to roll. Well, look at uh, in the US, uh, Doctor Who is now getting what it's dropped to four hundred thousand under four hundred thousand per episode. 000 per episode. Yeah. Uh, yeah. that's that's overnight. So I mean, you you it's under a million. It's yeah. regularly under a million, mm -hmm. which is pathetically sad because it was getting much better than that. And like I said before, it was on top of the world, you know, six, seven years ago, eight years ago. It was on top of the world. It was the, it was the highest thing on the geek food chain for a couple of years, which is saying something during Star mm -hmm. Wars and Marvel and all that. Doctor Who was owning Comic-Con. Yeah. And uh, what did they do? They, you know, they fucked it up immediately because... Uh, yeah, they just did. You know what? I don't want them listening to America. I saw the whole article about Joe Hill, and we talked about it last week. And quite, oh, by the way, I watched Lock and Key, and it wasn't bad. It's not terrible, by the way. I watched the first two uh, episodes, three episodes, and uh, I didn't hate it. So, uh, yeah, he probably would have been a lot better in Chibnall, but I don't think an American should be running the show. Maybe writing an episode or two, but yeah, 405,000. I mean, Critical Drinker gets more on that on a video in the first day in the first 24 yep. hours uh mm -hmm. where he where he gives us his five best standoffs which was awesome by the way <laughs> oh, um, that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh yeah so uh, over time it gets about eight hundred thousand views this the audience has gone down 23 percent and this is on top of the 60 percent it went down on the previous season here in the states mm -hmm. so they've lost everything they, everything they gained with Capaldi is now gone, and uh, in a, in two short seasons, all those gains, bye bye. So I, you know, defenders at this point, you got nothing uh, other than you know you you like the words Doctor Who next to each other in a blue box. You don't care what's in the show. No, it's uh, well, half of it is um, what we will call those two buzzwords, um, the virtue signaling. Yeah, and yeah, and, and the other half is. It, we'll call them diehards, but ultra diehards, where you want so badly for the show to still exist. This isn't Doctor Who. This hasn't been Doctor Who since, well, two years. Uh, well, mm -hmm. since December 2017. And I, I guess I can understand that uh, to a certain extent, because 
you know, I, I'm a diehard Doctor Who. I have been my whole life. I know half the original series from memory. But even, you know, I desperately want the show to still be around. There's no way that I can accept that this is Doctor Who. Your real Doctor Who is Big Finish. And thank God we still have Big Finish. But th this isn't the show. It, it's it's desperation. And I think uh, and we're also talking about just the way it was written. Um, and uh, Drinker, you, you may have uh, written a uh, book or two in your life. Uh, and I, I think, Gary, you actually uh, noted this as well while we were chatting throughout the episode. But did you notice the over-descriptive dialogue mm. where they are describing everything that they mm. see? It's it's laziness. And the, and the way they write the 13th Doctor, where you can tell they're not comfortable with it, they don't think that she can carry a scene without dialogue. So it's just diarrhea of the mouth throughout the entire episode. You notice as soon as they come in, where, and she's still wearing her stupid coat, the rest of them are in time... He's caught yeah, I was she comes in just that. motor mouth. Yeah, it it, it really she is just, like she you know, <laughs> when you don't have any real screen presence and you don't have that much acting ability, you know, you, you can't rely on that. Then you have to just have dialogue going constantly to try and distract distract the audience, and that's kind of what it feels like. And particularly in an episode like this, where it's actually quite slow paced initially, there's mm -hmm. not a huge amount going on. It's just people creeping from room to room. You know, again, they they don't have much going on, so they have to just dump in all this dialogue to try and fill the gaps. And so what you end up is is something that kind of kills any tension or, or interest that you might have created because people just won't shut up as it's going on. Yeah. Oh God, there's a there's a scene I, I post it in the chat so the house it's an interesting concept that doctor who has done uh, a couple of times actually where a house is kind of folding in on itself so you're going up uh, the stairs and you end up like seeing you know at, at the same place you were before the house mm -hmm. is folding in on itself right after we have a about five minute scene of people running into the same room and the house folding in on itself ryan and the as go it's like a maze it's like the house is folding in on itself and i just like <laughs> You wanted to bang my head against the wall. It's like, yeah, I saw that for like the last five minutes, but thanks for telling me. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, plank of wood, Ryan, again. Uh, oh my God, he just can't act. You can see he's like that AMC show is right around the corner. I can see it off in the distance. I know. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, I, I, I don't know. I, I did feel something, though. <laughs> Yeah, I, you guys have probably noticed, you kind of mentioned this before, but the the mouth breathing from the doctor as well, like constantly, it's like she's always out of breath. It's like, yeah, and so we need to get over here, and, and we have to do this quickly now. And it's like fucking hell, just calm down for a second, Jesus yeah. Christ! You're not even that old, like you shouldn't be this unfit. No, does she smoke or something? Uh, I, I yeah, it, it's it, uh, uh, you know. And it's it after it's after Joe Martin. I'm sorry, but like Joe Martin, I saw Joe Martin. I'm like, you know, that shit could work. She wasn't like perfect, and I didn't like her shirt or anything. But after seeing Joe Martin, I've just it's been worse. Uh, I actually, you know, never really loved Jody. Believe it or not, I know this comes as a surprise, but ever since seeing Joe on the screen, it's just worse. And then, yeah, and now I'm seeing everything: her running, her mouth opening all the time but the worst part about it is just the bad david Tennant slash matt smith impression and it's you know i did the video on her interview that everybody listened to with Tennant, where she said she stopped watching the episodes because she was intimidated uh i you would think she would change her mind on that that you absolutely if you're a doctor you are obligated to become as familiar as possible with the show i would do it as a professional but that's mm -hmm. that's the modern actor right now. They're just oh, we, we got the I got the job, so I'm not gonna like they're not gonna fire me. I'm female. There's no way I could stay at this job for ten years if I want to. Yep. Well, so. she's uh, it's missing the whole point of the regeneration cycle because the each doctor and every producer until now has supported this, where each doctor has to have an entirely different personality separate from every doctor that came before there are some similarities where matt smith at times was channeling patrick troughton but he had he had still the most unique interpretation of the doctor 
um, Peter Capaldi, and there's that uh, one scene in Mummy of the Orient, Orient Express when he actually speaks with Tom Baker's voice. But again, it was a completely different interpretation of the Doctor. So she misses the point right off the bat, and it's it, when she tries to be um, authoritative, scary Jody. She, she's uh, channeling David Tennant, and it just falls flat. The rest of the time, she's trying to be Matt Smith, and I know I've said this in other streams. Uh, Matt Smith is probably the most unique doctor or the most unique actor that has ever portrayed the doctor. Nobody can do Dr. Eleven other than Matt Smith. And it's because, you know, he has mm. that wonderfully strange look to him. He has those strange mannerisms that are distinctly his. And no other doctor, no other actor could copy that. And just watching Whitaker try and fail every week and it's the the way she over exaggerates the manicness as well which was something inherent to uh, matt smith as well and he did go over the top uh, a few times i think the uh, the doctor the widow in the wardrobe was the one episode where he channeled it to 10 and in that case it didn't really work but she she has no ability to bring her own interpretation of the doctor because a lot of the actors as well they were channeling their own personalities into the role. Like the fourth doctor, Tom Baker, was playing Tom Baker. Mm -hmm. And if she had to channel her own personality, and while she doesn't really have a personality because all she's done prior to Doctor Who, at least in terms of what I've seen, is playing sad, mopey characters in melodramas. So there's no way that this actress ever would have worked as the doctor. And the whole attack where you, we hate her because she's a woman, like, no, Joe Martin is the perfect example of that. She actually pulled off the doctor. She, in those few minutes, you could tell she had a unique personality. And she had that look of authority that every doctor except for Jodie Whittaker has had. And she just had that look of annoyance. And uh, uh, she was very judgmental. I, that, as a matter of fact, that's going to be my thumbnail. That that right after that speech, she's got her little, her like, her Sylvester Stallone lip up of judgment, yeah. whatever it is. Uh, we're gonna get she some Q. She wasn't just doing it, you know, was she? she? She was actually mean in this one. She was mean. She was yeah, mean. She, she was she very, was very arrogant in this one yeah. as well, yeah. where where yeah. she takes possession of the um, uh, Siberium, whatever it's called, and she's like, "Yeah, I think it likes me. You can tell that I'm the best host ever because I'm superior. I'm amazing." And I was like, "Oh, shut up! Fuck off! Yep. You're not that. I'm brilliant." Could you imagine, like, I, I was, I keep thinking of Tenet in that role, how he would, like, having the Siberium taking over Tenet, he would, he, you know, he would, he's so method, even without being method, he would have screamed, he would have been crying, he would have been acting. Jody was just like saying, I was, I'm awesome. Uh, we're going to, we're going to do, we're on a time limit today, folks. So yeah. I'm going to get to some uh, Q&A here. Uh, we okay. got some super chats. Uh, what was that story? No, you're all right. Yeah. Bye. All right, we got Spitfire Mark 1A for five pounds. So shocked at the outdated bias broadcasting corp. Should it be should it not be cyber person, soyber person, soy boy man, <laughs> or soy boy insert preferred pronoun? Yes, I think it should be a uh, cyber pronoun. That should be it. That that's uh, <laughs> a cyber pronoun. Uh yes, they, uh they, they were very listen, they left as Critical Drinker said they're becoming predictably woke, and they actually left a giant woke bomb on the table. They could have, especially with the random body that they just, there's a part, there's a skeleton where these two hands come alive, and it just, it's not connected to the plot whatsoever, and they just kind of forgot about it. But they could have talked about how that skeleton was, was, uh, uh, I don't know, some, some native from co some country that, uh, you know, the, the UK had colonized and it's a cursed and it's connected to the Cybermen or whatever. They, they left a giant, you know, they could have gone after a colonialism, the patriarchy. I was a little disappointed. I'm just, did saying. you, did you get the impression with this episode? They had a bunch of like little concepts of like, Oh, you know, what's creepy, a, a skeleton hand crawling across the floor. Or do you know what's creepy? Like a, a ghostly maid that just appears in the windowsill and then disappears when the lightning flashes, you know, how can we incorporate that into this episode storyline? We can, not but who the fuck cares? Let's just put it in anyway and see what happens. Yeah. That's all we yeah. Oh, by the way. It's just a bunch of random way, it, ideas that sounded it, good. Fuck it, just shove it in. No one will care. Yeah. And honestly, I had. By the way, it was so forgettable. I had forgotten about it until I just thought about. It. I'm like, oh yeah, there's the skeleton hand. 
What did that yeah. have to fucking do with anything? Nothing. Uh, uh, by the way, guys, it isn't a lone Cyberman. It's actually, let's be political correct, it's self-partnered, okay? Oh, he's self partnered. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yep. Brilliant. Uh, 20, 20, oh. 20, 20. <laughs> uh, Mr. Fish for 50 Australian dollars. Woke is two legs good, four legs better. Woke is two legs mm -hmm. good, four legs better. Mr. Fish, thank you for the Australian $50. Uh, woke is woke. Um, I always get asked, what is woke? Uh, and and it's it's uh, they they try to trick you and with this question because they go that's not technically woke that's political or it's biased or it's partisan it's all of the above it's all of the above when you take Lord Byron and you specifically make him into a coward and an idiot and it doesn't really fit with the story because it wasn't meant to fit with the story it's like oh well we have to make a white male look bad in this episode because it's part of our inclusion whatever initiative so let's do it to Lord Byron uh, that's another patriarchal figure patriarchal figure that we can undermine and make fun of ha 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 because that's the only thing you can make fun of because you need to make fun of things in a script you have to have a villain you have to have people with flaws and you can't do it with anybody else now that's part of the problem it's their own trap so nigel mayo for five pounds i can't wait to find out how environmental issues related to the cybermen next week <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, well, that'll, that'll be the ascension of the Cybermen. It was the plastic in the ocean. It was. Uh, CCDV for $20. Do you wish you could write Doctor Who? I do. Even amateur writers could do better. Uh, yes. Uh, I wish that Bowles Trek and Critical Drinker would write Doctor Who. I would write, well, for one, I mean, well, Bowles Trek, you're Canadian, but you're closer to British than I am. Uh, so, yeah. I, I, we, we, we have the, the queen on our, uh, some of our money. And if you go to court, you go in the name of her majesty. So we're tangent. I can't talk today. We're roughly related to, uh, the UK and keep in mind, doctor who has filmed in Canada, so but do we, I, we, do we still own you guys then technically or, or uh, uh, really? no, you haven't owned us since <laughs> we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we, we just, uh, we just have the queen on everything. And, uh, well, I guess, um harry and what's her face are going to be moving here uh but no it's uh i if somebody could say right doctor i'm like no doctor who needs to be written by somebody who's british so so two of us could write doctor who um uh two of us couldn't sorry i yeah. think i think at this point i i would write like the time core of the tardis overloads and explodes killing everyone involved the end Thank uh, you. i think that's the best thing for this show <laughs> Time to move on. Um, and, and I'll talk about it in my article. Uh, the, you know, go right. If, if some repurposer or creative wants to go out there and write their own story and fill it full of whatever agenda they want and it's original, God, please do. Go ahead. Write it all day long. But when it's a show that used to be enjoyed by everyone that didn't, you know, openly offend everyone until very recently. And then when you make that giant shift and some of us or a lot of us stop watching and complaining about it. And then you call us racist and phobes. It's like it's the goddamn wheels on the bus going round and round on this shit. We've been talking about it for two years. Uh, and now we're seeing the results. This is going to be the big year long. I told you so. Bulls Trek's going to say, I told you so critical when people stop watching and guess you're like, wow, nobody's watching our show anymore. What happened? Oh, Maybe? wait. Yeah. Somebody here found a loophole. Yes. Uh, Sydney Newman, the um, essentially the creator of Doctor Who was Canadian. So um, I, I guess, yeah, I can write Doctor Who. Oh, this you is can. fun. Everybody's getting fired and killed. <laughs> in that order well i guess um, you could uh, they're dead you can still fire them after they're dead yeah well well you, you, well if you if you have the doctor then it will regenerate into well probably something worse um yeah I, I would have fun with that well i mean if you kill the time lord quick enough they can't i mean that one time lord got fried and she couldn't regenerate mm -hmm. uh when she got killed mm -hmm. by the doctor the the uh, first female doctor of color played by Joe Martin. I mean, did kill her. She she's the one who jammed the gun. Mm -hmm. You know, I told her not to pull the trigger. That's still killing her. I mean, that was the dumbest bloody move ever. Yeah. <laughs> like, how did she fall for that? You're a time lord. You're you're meant to be smarter than this. <laughs> God. Well, so it was dumb. a lover, it was a lovers' quarrel. 
critical it, drinker. It, it, you know? Yeah, it goes right back to what I've always said, right? The character is only ever as smart as the person who writes it, and the people who write this are dumb as fuck. Like, this is the problem. Yep. Uh, no argument here. And uh, that's the case with Star Trek, Star Trek Picard, Star Trek Discovery, um, and uh, other things. Cracklin for a uh, dollar ninety nine. Uh, by the way, CCDV, thank you for the $20. I appreciate it. Cracklin for $1.99. Terrible writing and bad acting? Nah, it'll be fine. It'll it'll be fine. <laughs> Everything's nah, gonna be it'll fine. be fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, protogism. Pro, protolo, pro, protologism? I always get that wrong. I'm just going to say jism for short, okay? Just because we're friends. Uh, five Chilean... What? What the hell? Chilean dollars? For the love of Jody Gary, it's Graham, not Graham, uh, not Graham. And Graham. why? Uh, I'm American. Graham. His name is Graham. Graham. I'm, Amer <laughs> I'm American. We don't say Graham or Graham. Uh, no, I'm simple. Uh, and why Daenerys Targaryen and Varys and Brian? Uh, okay, it's Brian of Tarth. And I always say Brienne because I have a niece named Brienne. Okay. Uh, it's just a, a it's and a Varys, Varys, and Daenerys Targaryen. Am I saying this wrong? Uh, by the way, George R. R. Martin's American too. Okay. Uh, Protogism for five towns. Gary, I can't believe Mrs. Nerdrotic isn't spanking you with your spoiler paddle for watching series 12 of the SJW live action, The Magic School Bus. Well, maybe she is, and I just don't kiss and tell protogism, okay? Uh, mega uh, <laughs> Neutrobite for two it's pounds. It's the weekend. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. <laughs> just that Valentine's Day, yo. Uh, <laughs> mega mega Neutrobite for two pounds. Dalek, Daleks. A Dalek. I can say Dalek. Daleks in the last two episodes of the special. Um, guys and gals, did you see the writing all over the wall? Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. did, did you did you recognize some of that writing? Because some of it did look a little Dalek to me. I could be wrong. It looked like, looked like runes for, from my yes. perspective, but but if I pulled down this little mask that's right there, there's a little there's little bits of writing above the the stock that looks a little bit like that. It might be nothing, but uh, it looked somewhat familiar. Uh, maybe they didn't know, or maybe that's future episodes. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if they try to rip off, uh, uh, you know, season two. Uh, mega, oh, thank you, Mega Nutribite for two pounds. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a minute. Woo. Uh, Proto Jism for 10 Chilean dollars. Dr. Womb isn't even Tumblr, G, uh, Tumblr GIF genetic. You, you're doing these words I cannot pronounce, man. Tumblr GIF <laughs> genic <laughs> anymore because it looks bad in every single way in other words you they you know doctor who tumblr gifts used to be is tumblr still around i thought it was gone oh no they got rid of the porn but yeah it's still there. Uh, so it's it, it's effectively dead it's just uh it, it's great for humor that's that's about it gotcha. you, if, you, if you think twitter's bad check out tumblr these days uh, <laughs> i think i'll pass yeah I'm not that much of a mathicist. Yeah. Well, no, nobody wants to see a weird nasal. She kind of is that. And nobody wants to see that. That's the Rimmer face, I'm telling you. That's what he used to do in Red Dwarf. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, hey, somebody sent me uh, uh, in my P.O. box. Somebody sent me season one. So I'm going to start from scratch on that one. I've only seen random episodes. I haven't oh, seen you, you've never one. watched it. Okay. Um... Yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah. oh, I'm it, starting it is, from scratch. It, it is from the days of good BBC and one of the best sci-fi. It's a sci-fi comedy, but one of the best sci-fi series ever made. Mm -hmm. So uh, as soon as you finish season yes. one, you'll be wanting to get the rest. Nice. Yes. Uh, okay. So it's Tumblr genic or Tumblrific, I would say, uh, because it looks bad in every single way, like Jody's face. Uh, just when she's making an expression proto uh so other fans there really absolutely no reason for absolutely anyone to watch it anymore except to review it and mock it 
incessantly. That's what I like to do. Uh, Mary Ashmead gives us the farting cat, the cat that farts hearts for $2. Um, it's it's great. I, that, that one cracks me up. Uh, Daniel, for $5, if Capaldi's run had been had not been undermined by SJW writing, it would likely still be the doctor rivaling tenant wokeness begets even more wokeness you're absolutely correct daniel for five dollars mm -hmm. i'm not gonna argue and he you. would still be playing the doctor because yep. it was rumored he yes. wanted to do five series so uh if he hadn't been hypothetically but i i'm fairly certain this happened screwed uh yeah this would have been the final season of peter capaldi so if you want to if i if you aren't depressed enough um i just ruined everyone's day so uh you're welcome Thank Thanks you for Foster. that. Yeah. <laughs> um, just, just while we're here, guys, I'm probably going to have to drop off just now. Uh, I've got a few other things I need to do. But drop thank off. Thank you for having me off. Thank, thank you for having me on the stream. Thank you for coming in for a few. We appreciate it. And yeah, we're we're doing five more, and we're out of here. So yeah. thank you, Critical Drinker. Please subscribe to Critical Drinker, everyone. Thank yeah, you. Take care, right. my friend. I'm, I'm going to go away now. Go away now. <laughs> All right, that was awesome. So uh, let's we got five more here. Mark C. If I'm going to be called a misogynist, can I get Jody wandering around in the TARDIS in a bra and thong, handing her male companion a beer while she does timey wimey stuff? Yeah, I mean, like at this point, yes. Uh, but no, actually, I no. don't want to see that. No, I actually don't. No, no, we'll 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 pass on that, or at least warn us, and we'll skip that episode. Yeah. Uh, Protologism. Protologism for five. I'm gonna have to see what that is. Watch this live. Uh, watch this live on the stream. It's only three minutes long and redeems Jody. Doctor Who cares by Padel on YouTube. I I will watch it next time. We'll watch it in our finale. Uh, I do not have time today. We got to wrap this up. Chris Persia for five pounds. Whatever happened to Capaldi's reminder to the next Doctor before regenerating? Always be kind. Exactly. There was a moment in this where it almost mm -hmm. seemed like Jodie Whittaker's doctor remembered a previous companion who might have gotten, I don't know, uh, Mex yes. she, she's all, I'm not going to see anybody else I care about turn into a cyber person again. And uh, yeah, I was like, whoa, did they just refer back to Capaldi's era mm -hmm. for a second? Uh, but that was fleeting. It was fleeting. Uh, Curtis, okay. she she had no idea what they were talking about anyway. No. <laughs> she, what's my reference here? Oh, don't worry about it, Jody. You didn't watch that episode. Uh, Curtis Easton for five pounds. At least series twenty four had dragon fire. The series doesn't have any good episodes. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. This season is better than last season, and it still sucks. Uh, Scottish nerd for two pounds. Smoke me a kipper. I'll be back for breakfast. Um. Uh, n Scottish nerd, you got it. What's a kipper? I believe it's fish. It's a, ah, okay. It's, it, it, it's, it's a, a British phrase thing. From Red Dwarf. It's a phrase from Red Dwarf. You'll get it. <laughs> All right. It'll make sense. It'll make oh, sense oh, in yes, the future. Uh, that that would now make sense. Although, uh, what is kippers a fish? Right, Starry. It is, yeah. Yeah, you have fish for breakfast. A British thing. You guys have fish for breakfast? That is disgusting. Um, Crimson Taint for $13.99 Canadian. He says, thank you. I say, de nada, which is your welcome in Spanish. Or bita. Uh, Justin Doyle for five pounds. This episode was like the frail love child of Downton Abbey and Scooby Doo. <laughs> the frail love child of Downton Abbey and Scooby Doo. The Cyberman yeah. was old man withers. <laughs> Except in Down Abbey, people can actually act. So, yes. uh, yeah. <laughs> I absolutely agree. Okay, we're going to wrap it up there, folks. Sorry, this one went longer than I expected. But uh, please uh, plug yourselves. We'll start with Starry Eyed Girl. We're, uh, you, you have Twitter. Yeah, I'm on Twitter. You can find me at, at Starry Eyed Girl. And I'm also part of the Type 40 podcast as well. We've just... Um, we just had a very um, cathartic conversation about last week's episode. So I feel like I've got it out my system now. And did you share that on your Twitter? Can I link that somewhere? The podcast? Uh, it's, it, it's not up yet, but I will. Yeah, yeah let me know when will, it's out. Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you. And I'll share it. Uh, Bulls Trek, please plug your wonderful channel. Uh, well, I have the world's most amusing Twitter account. And uh, I talk <laughs> about things on YouTube sometimes and uh 
yeah that that's that's what i do and it's uh it's fun oh it's so much fun especially dealing yes. with the jody bots and the wonderful beautiful inclusive em- empathetic doctor who fans uh you've been really stunning and brave lately uh and i look forward to ignoring more of your insults have a nice day thank you everybody who's joined us thank you for the super chats uh if i did miss any i will make that up at a future show and uh which i didn't i hopefully i didn't and everybody remember that there is older doctor who that's good go watch it on uh, brit box and don't support anything with this new logo on it because they don't like you or don't want you as a fan anymore so in the meantime ciao baby nerdorotic.com